Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all to the second, uh, third session of the day. Uh, today, we have the honor and pleasure of having uh, Professor uh, Mohammad Ashraf Rathad with us. Uh, sir is Assistant Professor Skost Kashmir. And the topic uh, chosen for deliberation today by our esteemed guest is bioinformatics and its application in aquaculture. Before Sir could begin uh, the topic, I would want to provide a brief introduction into the work of our uh, esteemed guest. Sir has done his bachelor's in fisheries in science, uh, fishery sciences uh, from uh, Rishi Vidya Peet Dapoli, Maharashtra. A master's in fishery science in Central Institute of Fishery Education, Mumbai, and PhD in 2015, Central Institute of Fishery Education, Mumbai, India. Uh, sir is uh, uh, sir is uh, sir has gotten the award uh, Young Scientist Award 2017 Young Scientist Award 2017 from Society of Fisheries and Life Sciences College of Fisheries, Mangalore. Uh, sir has published high impact uh, factor research paper uh, award. He has gotten an award for uh, high impact research paper publication in 2016. Uh, uh, among his accolades, uh, Professor K. H. Uh, Ali Kumuni, Best PhD Student Gold Medal Award in 2014-15, Best Young Scientist Award in 2015 in Agriculture and Allied Fields, uh, Altec Group. Uh, uh, among many of his uh, accolades, he has secured uh, first rank in All India Combined Examination 2011 for Senior Research Fellow. Secured first rank in All India Combined Examination 2008 in JRF. Uh, uh, awarded Prince uh, Sokhla Fellowship by Prince Sokhla University Thailand for uh, pursuing PhD in 2011. Uh, he, he has gotten uh, so many research uh, grants and projects. One of the uh, accolades uh, in, the, in terms of research projects and grants, he has gotten development of pure line lines for genetic improvement in rainbow trout, upscaling and sustainable quality seed production in Kashmir Valley to enhance aquaculture production, Ministry of Fisheries, Annual History, Husbandry and Dairy. Uh, he, the funding was to the tune of uh, 2.12 crores. Uh, sir has gotten uh, 22 lakhs for the role of estrogen, androgen, erotomase and the receptor and sexual differentiation in fish 2016. Uh, he has gotten 1.2 lakhs uh, as grant in silico identification novel molecules for growth, breeding, and disease treatment. Uh, Sir has also structural character uh, uh, gotten the project in structural characterization of computer computational analysis of growth hormone receptors in rainbow trout in 2019's cost. Uh, they, he has attended many uh, training, workshops, seminars, and conferences across the uh, uh, planet. And, uh, those are the uh, very few uh, accolades of our esteemed guest. Now I, I invite our uh, esteemed guest, uh, uh, Dr. Mohammad Ashraf Rathar, to deliberate on the topic. So you are audible, visible, and your presentation is also visible. You can start. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I want to thank organizers, course director, Dr. Faisal, for inviting me to this lecture. So as, as the presenter has uh, rightly said, my topic uh, will be on bioinformatics and its applications in aquaculture. Is I'm audible? Is I'm audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So uh, I'm sure you may be aware about these words, uh, bioinformatics uh, or its uh, applications. So today I'm going to talk about uh, what is this uh, bioinformatics. Is my slide sir, changing? Is my slide, slide start changing? Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, thank you. So I'm going to talk about the bioinformatics. I will give you overview of what is bioinformatics, what the subject is, what it's uh, what is dealing, okay? So I'm going to talk, talk about something, the history, where from the bioinformatics has started, what is present scenario about the bioinformatics, what are the different fields, okay? Now, what are the different fields, whether it is uh, people are using the medical science, people are using agriculture, people are using what, what's the scenario with the fisheries, being a, being a, being a fisheries uh, training or fishing professionals. So uh, another important point that is related with the bioinformatics, the biological databases, what are the public databases which are available for us, what sort of data we can get, uh, get from there, uh, how we can use the data uh, for our research, for our analysis, so uh, another point that I am going to talk that is more important, that's more relevant, that is the main aim of this uh, lecture, main aim of this training, how, how we can use this uh, bioinformatics uh, in aquaculture, what, what are the applications, what are the different opportunities. 
and at the last i will uh, also give uh, one two slides talk uh, talk about the, what are the opportunities in terms of education okay nowadays there are the uh, degrees there are the industries uh, where we have the opportunity now uh, to learn or uh, to do uh, to do research in the bioinformatics area so let's go to uh, start directly if we talk uh, about the bioinformatics if you see in the common uh, this language it, it's a made up of the two words one is the bio other is the informatics bio it, it is it's common sense it is something related with uh, this uh, biological science and informatics it is something related with the it sector so what we can say this bioinformatics it is the interdisciplinary science in which biology is involved in which i talk uh, i already told it's the informatics that something computer science is involved as something mathematics is involved when you are talking about the softwares and hardwares there are the calculations there are the algorithms where the mathematics science plays the important role so but aim is only to study this uh, bioinformatics or to use computer science or statics or uh, some other fields to study to process or to analyze the biological data whatever biological data we get that data may be from the plant science may be from the animal science may be from the fisheries maybe from uh, microbes maybe from insects whatever it may be there so only thing is to get, it is we can analyze the things we can use the tools we can use the softwares we can use the servers so in order to analyze this uh, molecules but if we see in the biological science we have this data uh, uh, at the three levels if we uh, you are already knowing about this central dogma so we have this biological data at the three level first and foremost is the dna whether uh, when we talk about the dna there is the data in the form of this adenine guanine cytosine and uh, i mean that nitrogen bases are there the uh, other level uh, that we can analyze the data is the uh, when the, 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 there is a transcription uh, is there that is the mrna level and another thing is that's the protein level step by step i will i, I will talk about these things uh, in today's presentation so if we uh, see this bioinformatics uh, in terms of it is an interaction or it is an interdisciplinary as i told it's interdisciplinary uh, science in which uh, chemistry biology statics computer science maybe some other science are involved like uh, for example if we talk about the proteins and uh, there is the amino acids there is the chemistry there is the bonds there is the peptide bonds in which, uh, there is a hydrogen bond there is a forces uh, in the in the, in the molecules that like van der waals force like electrostatic force so uh, when you are knowing these forces when you are uh, knowing what is a hydrogen bond what is a covalent bond then you can understand the biological molecules yeah here the computer science is there uh, nowadays you are seeing the softwares for drug designing you are seeing the softwares for protein modeling you are seeing the softwares for uh, dna analysis ngs data analysis in that you have some basic algorithm uh, on the base of that that uh, software that tool is uh, working so it is the amalgamations or it is the interdisciplinary science where uh, small small parts from every science is there uh, um, in order to make this uh, subjects this bioinformatics so one by one i will talk uh, about uh, the components of the bioinformatics i will see why the chemistry is involved why the statics is involved why the biological science is involved is i am audible yes is i am audible yes sir yes sir okay okay so here in this figure you can clearly see there is a chromosome okay in the chromosome you know uh, there is a dna okay in the dna if we see inside the dna it is made up of the nucleotide bases that is the data which we are getting at the first level okay our first level means i am not talking here about the rna i am not talking about here the proteins so we have uh, as you know if we see the human genome size it's near about 3.2 million base pair 3.22 million base pair dna data is there that what is that dna data that dna data is adenine guanine cytosine and thymine in that data that data is there and we are analyzing we are trying to find out where are the coding genes where are the non coding genes where are the promoters this all analysis this all things we can do nowadays in in silico in dry lab with the help of this bioinformatics so we can use the computer science we can use uh, tools we can use the hardware softwares to analyze 3.2 million data yeah in if we see in terms of fisheries zebra fish is unit size in here about 1.4 gb we can find out where are the exons where are the introns where are the transcription sites where are the uh, this enhancers where are the promoters we can analyze everything by using this bioinformatics subjects or by using this bioinformatics tools or computational biology uh, in if we talk in the professional sense of way computational bio, biology is a better term than the bioinformatics so if we look uh, the what are the basic components that you need for the bioinformatics yeah, what bioinformatics needs yeah, bioinformatics data analysis needs first and foremost as i was talking about the creation of data or database so 
to do to use the bioinformatic tool to use bioinformatics uh, software to do the analysis you should have the data like suppose if somebody want to know uh, what was the rice production of india from last 15 years well, that means you should have uh, the data of 15 uh, years so that you can tell which state or which district or which variety is the highest production of rice in, in in case of fisheries if we know also what what which was the most dominant fish which was the most cultured fish from last 15 years 10 years ago you should have the first and foremost data which you want to analyze or which you want to interpret then you should have the software okay you should develop this algorithm what you want okay you want no i want analysis in this this way i should uh should know no in which uh district in india the literacy rate is less or or which district uh, which district is smallest which district you should you should develop the software or you should develop the tool like that so that it can fulfill your all needs what whatever in what sense or in what area in what um intention you want to analyze the data so you should have that algorithm or that tool or that software you have to develop like that so that you can analyze your data as per your convenience the, and then analysis when you will do develop the tool you will put the data in that tool and you will analyze and then you can start doing the interpretations what what you want you want to see which fish has the highest genome size okay if the genome sequence is available you at the nc by near about uh, nowadays near about 700 600 fishes whole genome is available you want to check out which uh, which fish has the highest genome size okay which fish has the highest chromosome okay you will get you you, you have the data you will put on the software and then you can get the analysis or you can interpret data what, what what on the basis of your parameters on the basis of your factors which you have keep so but these three components that the three things are very important in order to uh, do the bioinformatics work or whether it is agriculture whether it is a fisheries or whether it is a veterinary science whatever it is there but these basic things data software uh, software and the data interpretation analysis tool you need these things to do uh, bioinformatics work so uh, before going to uh, other aspects biological databases or applications aquaculture as i already told if we talk in the biological science whether the biology science is dealing with the viruses or whether the biological science is dealing with the plants or animals or fisheries this the data we have in the biological science is at the three level at the dna level at the rna level and the protein levels okay at any levels you can uh, if you have the data you can analyze as per your convenience in, in case of dna you want to see where are the exons where are the introns where are the transcription sites where are the promoter where are the uh, an answer everything you can check by using the bioinformatics tool nowadays yeah, you want to see the uh, uh, rna analysis like you maybe have heard about the transcriptomes okay in the transcriptome we are analyzing rna sequence data or in protein level you want to have the proteins uh, structure you want to do protein modeling you want to develop some structure of the particular protein you want to see who, uh, what are the bindings why are the binding sites why the drug can be bind yeah oh, uh, this protein if it's a growth hormone protein or it is a lh protein how much amino acid length is there which amino acid is there how what is the composition of lot of things lot of parameters lot of lot of analysis you can uh, do uh, nowadays uh, by taking the data which is available at the free uh, public uh, databases like uh, you maybe have heard about the well-known databases the ncda you can download freely data available about the which the scientists are uh, across the globe all uh, the scientists or researchers has been deposited their repositories are there you can take and you can freely analyze that and uh, give, uh, give the good interpretations good analysis and you can publish the good papers uh, without speak, uh, spending 10 rupees also so but thing is there you should know what you are doing you should know the tools you should know the softwares how to do how uh, what to do you should know these things but what my intention is here what i want to clear here no these three levels of data uh, are presently very important you may have heard about this ngs people are doing nowadays whole genome by using this next generation sequencing they have found out recently i have seen a paper from india uh, they have done i think uh, this whole genome uh, this siba siba uh, central Institute of bricks tracker they have done um, this uh, whole genome sequence of gray mullet so after doing the whole genome sequence nowadays platforms are very easy uh, to do the sequencing but you then you analyze you you're trying to find out where are the reproductive genes where are the growth hormone genes where are the uh this other digestive genes where are the promoters which one is the non-coding genes which one is the coding gene? so many things have you can use by using these softwares whether these softwares are free some are paid ones some are highly complicated some needs languages some are easy to handle so you can analyze data any level uh, what i have seen in the central uh, dogma so 
then question uh, is coming why the people are using uh, this uh, bioinformatics okay people we are talking this bioinformatics a lot of application you can go to plant science you can go animal science you can do this analysis you can do that analysis why this bioinformatics is important answer is in uh, this uh, in front of you suppose uh, if we take a simple example that a pandemic happens uh, for uh, last three years pandemic was there so when uh, in 2019 when the covid uh, starts in the china so first and foremost they was curious this uh, chinese scientist was very curious to know what what which is the species or what is the genetic content what what is this uh, this uh, strain whether it's rna uh, uh, this virus whether it's a uh, dna virus so first and foremost to think what they have done they have uh, sequenced the genome of the coronavirus and they know no it's a corona family they have analyzed they have done analysis uh, molecular analysis to find out which uh, exactly virus it is then what they have done they have put that uh, whole data what the genome size was this coronavirus they have put in the public database so people uh, throughout the world was aware no chinese people have done this coronavirus genome it is available in the public database that is the most important uh, aspects of this so that uh, anybody throughout the world any scientist can download in the public database freely this data to use his research work or to do the analysis whatever you want to know uh, about that uh, sequence uh, data so that is uh, very much important like in fisheries also we when the people are uh, this working on whole genome or some genes or this one that one they are putting that data available to the public uh, database which is freely available so that means you can easily retrieve you can usually store there that's throughout uh, throughout and uh, uh, throughout whole life uh, that data is there until you are not deleting that if somebody is not deleting that it will be there there and you can also uh, do the comparison suppose if somebody has done in india somebody has worked on the imc indian major carbs he is working he has worked on growth hormones if you want to compare that growth hormone of katla or rohu or milgar milgar with uh, suppose uh, european some fish like uh, this uh, um, salmon or uh, this uh, rainbow trout so he can easily uh, if the data is available at the public database he can easily compare with each other okay yeah he can uh, find out the protein's function unknown protein if the protein they have uh, characterized the gene they have found the gene and they have translated into the amino acids they can predict the uh, there are the nowadays the tools they can predict what is the protein function in which pathway uh, this protein is everything they can do yeah, they can compare uh, their data their whole genome size one fish to another fish are humans to chimpanzee are humans to some other zebra fish what is the similarity molecular similarity between the zebra fish and the humans or dog or cat or rat everything you can do by using this bioinformatics the only thing is that if the if, if, if the data is available at the public database the data is available freely to the uh, researchers that's also why the people are uh, understanding that's what happen when the coronavirus happening people have find out so many strains are there this is african strain so they was comparing with the chinese strain a chinese strain they was comparing with the indian strain so they was find out no there is some molecular level differences there that's why they was calling it's a variant or it is a there is some mutation so they was using bioinformat tools or they was downloading uh, the, the data when makes available at the public of uh, platform they was comparing each other and they was going no no something different is there it is not the strain that is same that uh, coronavirus was uh, strain was in india it is different with south respect africa or with respect to chinese so these all things we can do nowadays easily simply by using this free software by using the paid softwares with the help of this bioinformatics so that's why the people are studying the bioinformatics that's why people are interested in the bioinformatics so uh, the goal of the bioinformatics uh, is this one okay like i was talking people are trying to find out genes functions okay yeah why are uh, if somebody has uh, sequence the gene they want to find out where where are it is the coding genes where where are the non coding genes they can do yeah they are uh, they are uh, uh, going for protein structures or protein uh, alignment structures and to, to find out so uh, to find out why are the uh, drug binding sites okay they want to target it they want to find out the antagonistic they want to find out the agonistic of that uh, protein against yeah they want to as some they they, uh, they have sequence the whole genome of many fish like i have told you recently that they have done with a uh, gray millet they want to assemble it okay they want to find out where are the promoter where are the uh, transcription sites where are the uh, this uh, stop codon where are the starting codon they, they want to do the annotation of that genome yeah they want to check out pattern of the genes okay everything they can do with every organism it's not only the fish whether people somebody is from the entomology somebody is from the Uh, environmental science environmental microbes say insects or mollusks or shrimps or fishes or humans or dog any uh, any organism in biological system it, it may be there so you can use this bioinformatics you can find out all these things by using this nowadays the bioinformatics 
tools. There is no issue in that. So if you talk about the fields of the bioinformatics, it is tremendous. It's, it, 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 it is uh, unlimited, okay? There is no limit. It is a, sky is limited in that. Like the last one when uh, this coronavirus hits the China, America and other people was aware, no. I think they, they was they were thinking, you know, it has been created in the lab. This uh, coronavirus and kill lab, they were saying, no, it's a biological weapon. It's a biological uh, this uh, creation. It's a biological creation. They was worried, you know, there, there's something genetical modification or they maybe have keep it, uh, it uh, inside the lab. That's why it's a more world and that's why the people was dying. So they was highly curious about that. So there's a gene therapy, okay, you can uh, use uh, for drug development also this bioinformatics. Uh, in, if we talk about our sites in agriculture and allied sectors, you have the crop improvement by... Sorry, you can uh, have, you can, you, you can do the whole genome analysis of fish or agriculture. You can find out the genes which are disease resistant. You can find out the genes which are responsible for the disease. You can find out the genes which are responsible for the breeding. You can find out the genes which are responsible for maturation. Everything you can do. Like here has been another point has been mentioned here. That is a forensic science analysis of microbes. Like forensic science, you may be already knowing in which they are doing nothing. They are doing this DNA analysis. They are doing marker analysis, microsatellite analysis. They can in which you can find out why is the microsatellite, why is the mini satellites. So you can use the bioinformatics tools. That you can do the sequencing and you can do the analysis. You can find out. Yeah? Another thing, uh, what I have mentioned here is the evolutionary study. Okay, you want to see. Uh, humans, uh, one gene or human whole genome, you know how much it is similar, how much it is dissimilar with respect to chimpanzee, with respect to zebra fish, with respect to dog or with respect to cow, whatever you want to do. So fields are uh, tremendous. There is nothing uh, this uh, uh, limited is there. It is a totally unlimited. It is a, it is a, it is a virgin field. It is a, it is a growing field. Every day new things are coming. Uh, coming. Every day new uh, softwares are coming for different analysis, different objectives, different uh, uh, work. So fields are unlimited. There is no uh, limitations in in the in the bioinformatics so if we uh, see the ideal uh, bioinformatics lab okay so uh, what we are doing whatever you are doing in the in silico or dry lab the bioinformatics you are doing analysis you are finding out the genes or you are doing the mutation okay you are finding the snp single nucleotide but you are find some markers but it is necessary to validate it in the data that analysis in the bat lab that's what here i have seen here the uh, this uh, competition and bat lab cycle okay from biological system to biological object to com competition analysis to uh, putting the experiment okay to analyze the uh, things if somebody is saying okay i have developed some drug i have i found out some drugs some proteins against it, which uh, which from which promotes growth he will say no everything i have analyzed through the bioinformatics it is good it is binding here it is doing this it will analyze the protein property we will say no it's everything's fine but can you please prove it through the experiment so what you have to do you have to bring that molecule you have to bring that drug and you have to put the experiment and you have to see uh, you have to compare your data what you have done in the in silico what, what you have done in the uh, competition biology lab or in dry lab you have to compare with the experiment but it is damn sure if you have done uh, right way you have done the right procedure you have followed the uh, tools and methods if in the experiment uh, in the in silico or in the bioinformatics it is showing 90% 80% efficiency it is damn sure if it will not be the 100% thing it is not easy so it's not so easy to play with the biological system it may respond it may not respond but still if it is showing in the uh, in silico lab or dry lab it's showing 80% 90% similarity it is damn sure 50% 70% 60% it will show in the experiment if you have done the protocol right now uh, so what we uh, earlier was uh, when the when, when the drug designing was there when the drug discovery was there it was taking near about 10 years to 15 years to to find out the drug to find out the this uh, you, you you maybe have yourself uh, everyone is knowing about the pandemic within two and a half years uh, this uh, scientists to have across the globe they have come out with covid vaccine okay one of them is from uh, this covid shield that india has developed it's from uh, this uh, genetic engineering okay there is some uh, vectors there is some bioinformatics uh, analysis there they have find out the genes or they have find out the proteins which are responsible for the uh, uh, virulence uh, and they have target that with respect to uh, a vaccine that uh, the, uh, that genes so what what i mean to say here it is necessary if everything okay fine you are taking you know, my drug or my analysis my data genome and this one other things are there it is 100 percent right but you in the vet lab in the vet lab it is necessary to check that uh, analysis or to check that uh, work so, so that in order this bioinformatics or Mm, uh, work will be completed or bioinformatics uh, analysis whatever you are saying it, it we will we will get 100 percent proof no it's it's right or it's wrong so any question till now everything is clear is i am audible 
I am uh, clearly explaining the things. Any doubts there? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Any question? Any doubt? Is everything is okay? Are, are you understanding me? Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Watching. Clear. Clear. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, if we talk about the history, how this bioinformatics has been uh, started, how this has been started, it is a part. We cannot. Say it is is a part of the bio. Technology in the biotechnology, you will you will get the data. You you are doing gene characterization. You are getting the DNA. You are getting the RNA. Our protein expressions, other things. So it has been started from long history when the molecule, the first molecule, has been. You can see that's the insulin in 1956. Okay, which was made up of the five amino acids. Then uh, this scientist, this uh, De Hoff, has started the protein sequence database. Okay, so things has been. Then the yeast has been sequencing is the uh, the yeast fungus that has been. So you can send them 3D structures, 3D databases has been developed. The history is very long, but the term uh, bioinformatics has been an, uh, given in 1970s. This by these this two, two scientists, this Paul Hogwang and Ben, they have coined the term in 1972. They just uh, told it is the study of information processing the biotech system. Biotech system, what are the uh, system is processing, what the pathways, what how the cell mechanism, the DNA is changing into RNA and proteins, so many molecules, so many. Uh, network so many uh, pathways are involving to uh, control all these biological systems so this was the uh, computer this was the uh, system that uh, degoff has used to develop this uh, database atlas database that was the first database of protein sequence that have has been developed they have used with ibm uh, 7090 you can see how much big size is there and now today this small uh, this computers they are doing a lot of yeah, high uh, cloud computers are there uh, this uh, Computers are available for the data analysis. So then things going on, going on. Then uh, in 1988, uh, NCBI, the well-known database for a biological system, this National uh, um, Health, National Institute of Health, America has developed. Okay. Then Human, Human Genome Project has started in 1990s. Or oh, then a uh, uh, whole lot of whole genome works has been in some uh, plants, some animals, some fishes. Uh, genome has been completed and in 19 in 2015 they are completion of first completion model of complete cells and uh, maybe uh, are they available in what they are predicting what they are thinking you know uh, what are the data what are the processes uh, what are the things that are in a particular uh, cell uh, can be uh, done by competition model can be developed or competition data can be developed in uh, 2050 so that uh, we can know every part uh, every system in in a particular cell whether it's the ribosomes whether it's a mitochondria dna whether it's a uh, is uh, Golgi apparatus whether it's uh, uh, this uh, smooth and every data, but uh, whether they, they are made of the carbohydrates, they are made of the proteins, they are made of the, uh, this uh, DNA or RNA, every data of a particular cell in a particular tissue uh, will be available or will be uh, this making uh, will be make the model uh, for that. So, in the bioinformatics, this biological data pl uh, plays a very important uh, role. So if we look at the different uh, types of uh, biological databases are uh, available, whether the, the databases are the nucleotide databases, they are the protein databases, they are the RNA databases, where the uh, people throughout the world are depositing their data, we are getting the information now in, in, in US, in US, uh, this uh, institute or this um, scientist has done this work, he has worked on this virus, he has sequenced this virus, uh, Yeah, this, da this data is available from this lab or that lab. That work is already going on without biological databases or database computer uh, bioinformatics sciences incomplete. Without them, you cannot do as I told earlier. Uh, first and foremost, compound uh, component which is needed uh, for the bioinformatics is the data. Okay, until you you don't have data, you cannot use the tool, you cannot use the software to analyze. And if you have not have the data, how you can interpret the things? That is that 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 is the big the question. But before going into what are the different types of biological databases. Uh, what are the different biological databases? You, you have to understand what is uh, a database. Okay, so a database is a simple collection of related data. Like Indian, if somebody will may ask me, ask sir, how much uh, population is in India? Uh, yeah, other sense he will ask me, uh, what is the male female ratio uh, in India? Yeah, what is the rice production of India? Yeah, what is the literacy rate? How much children say every day? Like in the COVID, also they have developed some uh, database. They have developed some dashboard where everybody was was knowing. You know, in the Maharashtra, this much case was there every day. 
males females children like in kashmir also there was no you know how much uh, uh, which from which district the maximum uh, covid positive will go somebody was maintaining the data then uh, the people was knowing people are aware same things here in the biological science people are maintaining the data like i i, I told roughly i will in the coming slides i will talk about the ncbi so in the um, um, uh, ncbi this national institute of health okay america uh, they maintain this uh, ncbi so they are maintaining the biological data of all whether it's the plants animals insects whatever data may be there okay there are some they, that's the primary database there are some other primary database if you may be are aware or you may be knowing uh, that's ambl european molecular biology laboratory or and japan have its own database or some other have a, a database india has also developed some database related to officials uh, also to maintain some data so database is only in which the data is there but it is there it should be easily stored it can be easily retrieved okay you can retrieve back or it should be error free okay uh, when you uh, if you you people are uh, this uh, from the biotechnology or bioinformatics side or you are aware about the molecular science when somebody is doing any gene characterization or whole genome you know, anything uh, anything else he want to, uh, uh, that deposit the data at the public database so he will submit the data at ncbr why why he want to submit so there are the team which will look the data they will analyze it they will see see it is right something wrong is not there it has not been already published this one that one everything they will check then they will uh, release so uh, the team is there which is maintaining the database it is not easy to maintain the database they are maintaining but they only thing what they are doing you know it should be available freely it should be without there should not be any error there should not be any unnecessary returns okay it should be easily retrieved so that uh, it will be available at the public uh, they can easily uh uh make use of that uh, data so here i have uh, bring some animal uh, databases okay if you see uh, some uh, databases are there there has been uh, databases i think i will talk about later uh, different types of databases on the basis of difference like on the basis of the uh, organism like zebra fish has separate database in which you will get the, uh, every information of the zebra fish humans have every uh, separate databases okay drosophila has uh, different databases or c elegans different database here i have given uh, the table the, uh, that there is a name of the organism which they are some of the model organism their genome size is there or which organization have characterized that gene and when they have done uh, everything is there there is one fish called a puffer fish it is here so much as genome it is genome is uh, 390 mb okay the number of genes people have also predicted how many genes they have find out yet uh, till date they have find out uh, by using this uh, bioinformatics tools or which organizations uh, which in a shoot uh how done this uh, work then uh, their whole, whole genome that's also mentioned there so so what uh thing is there why these huge data people are making why this data uh is necessary why this data is made uh, available so th things only there you know it should be available it should be biological science or biology Biology is a rich of database that earlier I was uh, I was uh, talking about that the, the data are available at the DNA level, data are available at the protein level, data is available at the mRNA level. People are curious to know uh, uh, what is inside the DNA of uh, humans, what is inside of DNA in zebra fish, why why is the adenine, why is the guanine, what what what, what pattern it is, uh, what, which proteins are producing, how the how these proteins are uh, controlling the metabolism of the organism. People are. Uh, eager people are uh, this uh, curious about that they want to uh, analyze that they want to know that okay what is the channel catfish genome size what is the difference what is the difference between catfishes and the normal freshwater fish what is which genes uh, allow cold water fishes cold water fish to resist to minus 14 minus 20 what are the what is their genome con content or genome uh, part which is uh, which is uh, responsible for the cold tolerance same things for the salt tolerance and most important thing is this data uh, when the people are uh, putting the data at the public databases or public database it will become freely available to whole 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 community whole researchers from the world whether that researcher is from the nepal whether that research is from the bangladesh or pakistan or india or america so it will become available uh, to all to use his experiment to do the analysis to compare the data with his experiment other thing everything is became available to the free that's why the people are interested in the database that's why people are maintaining this database that's why people are interested uh to have the databases for um, on the basis of the organism on the basis of the molecules on the basis of some other things so that is the uh, reason that's what uh, i was uh, talking to make the available to scientists to, to make it readable to make is a, a, a disconnect with each other uh if you see the uh, data 
there are more than 2000 databases uh, in 2019 the data is earlier one so different types of data base whether it is a compared to genome whether it's a gene expert database whether it's a rna databases whether it's a protein databases whether it is a uh, whole genome databases whether it is a uh, what is that a scholars uh, database well known scholar uh, database well known uh, pub, like a library database or uh, this uh, education database or book database is the pubmed if you people may have seen a yeah, well known database for the research is the google scholar okay what that google is maintaining so that is also type of a database yeah like uh, you maybe have this social media uh, 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 databases like you have the facebook you have the instagram they, they there is the data for the people who have opened the accounts so there are everything whether mutation databases there there is a metabolic database are there so so many databases every day new databases are uh, developing for on the basis of the organism on the basis of different data on the basis of different uh, uh objectives but they uh, they are keeping the mind based upon the databases so that's what i uh, was talking about is if we talk about the classification of databases that that will be depends upon uh, type of data means what type of data is there whether the data is the primary whether the data is the secondary whether the data which type of data is there whether the data is the first data that uh, the man is uh, submitting or who is maintaining that yeah is data is a freely access okay whether data is a freely access like there are some databases like indian uh, raw database uh, this um, uh, is raw database uh, raw maybe have their own database or uh, raw uh, indian uh, this uh, secret agency raw is there so they may have their own database that's not available for everyone like you you need for uh, elsewhere or willy you need the access of that data you cannot open that uh, this uh, papers so some databases are free some are you need permission okay some you, you have only only for their official things so there are databases based from the organisms also name like i told you see elegan is there geography database is there or this uh, yeast database is there okay so there are different types of uh, databases on the list of the like genomic databases their structures enzyme databases there based upon the uh, data uh, access okay whether it's a publicly accessible whether you need the permission whether it is only available for uh, academic uh, people whether it is uh, restricted only for the commercial purposes so so many things are there but uh, if we talk about the based upon the data source that i told you whether the data the data is primary source okay the data is the secondary source so well known database uh, those are the primary databases uh, where people are uh, submitting their data that is that they have, that have their, their own data nothing has been uh, curated or then that has been manipulated like a well known database is the gene bank that ncbi okay ddg that's the uh, dna data bank of japan okay that's the embl they are the primary database where you can develop your own data original data nothing is their secondary databases are that they are taking data from the primary database and they will make some uh, changes in that and they can uh, they are uh, publishing in some uh, other databases they are the primary database uh, the primary nucleic database is there in front of you and the proteins like protein uh, primary database are there like, like protein informational resources swiss protein there uni protein is there okay trimbel is there these are the database which i have the primary which are the original data they are the secondary database also for the proteins like prosite is there pfame is there print is there okay where uh, they have taken the data from the primary source or analyze and make make separate database like uh, that database may contain the active sites that database may can can signal peptides they may contain this one which is not available at the primary uh, database so these are the secondary uh, databases like see here i have seen shown you clearly here the, what is the primary data what is the secondary data and what is the tertiary data and what are the interactions there yeah, some data may be um, uh, will uh, some bo bo body will develop the data based in which uh, he has shown the interaction of different proteins okay they are networking there are other things and he will make the separate database while only the protein protein interaction protein networking protein metabolism and other things will be available but that protein data he has taken from the primary source okay from primary databases so th that's why that bot database uh, data uh, will call say he will develop the structures cotton structure or tertiary structure we will call it it's a quaternary uh, tertiary database or it is a interaction da database so based upon the maintenance who is maintaining this database okay uh, or who is maintaining like a uh, gene bank uh, that ncbi has that is the ncbi the people are maintaining national center for biotechnology information there's a u.s database or embl is there which the european people are maintaining that swiss informative bioinformatics database is there the swiss people are maintaining so but what what is what they have done uh, with respect to the primary databases these uh, international organizations they have the project they have the course in them this primary database they have interlinked with each other okay they have interlinked with each other 
so that uh, if somebody want to uh, search somebody want to find out that there's some data in the japan database or an uh, american ncbi database or european database they can easily get data if that data is available at the japan uh, database or that data is available uh, this uh, the european uh, database if they will uh, search only in the ncbi also they can get the data they have interconnected it there was a project uh, that was going on but they had they have done the big job so that we are not separately go to uh, japan database or european database or ncbi separately so that to find out the data it is interlinked with each other so that you can access these databases only uh, by searching on the one primary database so uh, this is the ncbi okay it is the ncbi um, uh, this uh, interface where you have this drop boxes okay what you want to see uh, search if you down the database uh, that uh, um, scroll bar there are a lot of inside there may be this uh, data i think there are about 20 25 databases that you want to know the taxonomy you want to know the protein of any protein like he has the protein he has given uh, mlas uh, mlas of fish if you put you go search it will show you which which databases are which fish mlas uh, mlas enzyme data is available you can uh, select here in the drop box in the of proteins so you can go for nucleotides you can go for the genome okay you can put fish you can put human you can put dog or mouse whatever you want to do so you can put on the search bar and you can search and if the data is available it will show if data is not available with respect to that organism with respect to that protein with respect to that insect with respect to that living system it will say no it's not available it's not uh it that means the data related that has not been yet characterized or yet deposited in that public database so this is the ncb information uh this uh, nc uh, ncb that i already i have told you so this is the format what you you will get the data from the ncbi okay like here some uh, gene is there definition it's the humans okay the size of this gene is 1701 base pair okay here also the date is there when when that data has been deposited 27 august 1999 okay everything will be there there is a taxonomy there is will be the name who people have they have developed there is a it is some isnophil serine protease gene which is available okay in this format that ncbi will give your data every information which in a short when who is the author when they have developed the name of that uh, gene which one is there in the name of that organism which organism they have characterized or which organism they have uh, deposited on everything will be there crystal clear there will be no ambiguity there will be no confusion with respect to that uh, data uh, as i already told it's a very tough job to maintain these uh, data they are they are taking 100 percent care to know there should not be there any error there should not be any confusion to the public uh, those who are interested to take the data for their analysis or for their research for so these are the other uh, parameters okay they have shown here the coding regions okay coding sequence everything is there they have given the protein ids are there if you people are aware about this uh, molecular science you may be already know knowing these things nothing is new in that so this is another well-known database well-known biological database from european people european union okay it has been developed established in 1974 by 22 members uh, states of europe europe are maintained that they are spending this uh, money to maintain this database uh, its location is from uh, this this is another one which is from the uh, japan as i told you uh, japan it has started 1984 so there are other uh, types of uh, databases which are related with nucleic acids okay uh why the nucleic acid data with the dna data or rna data or protein protein also protein data is available as i told in ncbi there are a lot of data every whether the whole genome whether protein uh, data whether uh, gene expression data whether taxonomy whether uh some other whatever you want to nc uh, this uh, expresses can tags data is there snp data is there everything is available there so same thing is for the proteins also proteins you maybe have heard well known database of proteins where you will get the protein structure protein information uh, that's the protein data bank okay well known databases there could not require you will get uh, structures of the proteins uh, if you want to see now it's available if you want this is spike protein or coronavirus you can easily find out uh, you can membrane protein or coronavirus uh, structure uh, protein you can and um, you can easily find out it uh, at this protein data bank uh, which is uh, developed in 1971 uh, so he, he likes uh, crystal structures your 3d structures you will get from this so this is the 3d structure of the protein like this data you will get where you can easily find out different colors they have the meaning so they have the beta sheets they are the loops they are the helix so uh, this uh, the uh, different methods they can use for developing data uh, clearly everything is mentioned there in the protein data whether this uh, which technique has been used to develop the protein structure data like crystallography is there uh, you know, homology modeling is there every show is there so many methods are there for developing the data when the people are uh, characterizing this uh, developing the structure of this protein and they are uh, putting that uh, at the public database like this protein data bank so there's another protein uh, data bank where you can get 
this protein structures like uh, Uniprot, uh, uh, another database is there. So, so many things are there. Like uh, I told you on the base of the data, literature database is also there. This uh, PubMed database is there, which is NCBI uh, people, this uh, National uh, Institute of Health or National Laboratory of Medicine US is maintaining. You want to have different papers where you will get the different papers from uh, PubMed. Okay, uh, that's a public database. So Google Scholar is a well known database where you will get the research papers. So, oh, based upon the name of the organisms, okay, uh, based upon the name of the organism, there are the databases like uh, here you can see the yeast database is there, okay, name of the yeast and database link is there. You can go there, frog, fruit fly, okay, where you will get the, the uh, information of the particular uh, organisms only, particular related with respect to their genes, with respect to their proteins, with respect to their RNA. So, rat database is there, zebrafish database is also there, okay, Zara FIN is the uh, name, zebra, zebrafish information network so e coli database is there why you will if the people are interested on the e coli which genes are there how many genes are there what is their function what is their proteins okay what is their pathways what is their protein protein interactions everything you can get the information if it is available it has been done so based upon the model organism or your organism also they have given the name of the databases same thing if we were talking about the organisms we were talking about the rna or nucleic acids database rna databases are also there micro rna databases are available there okay long hair and databases are, are, are available there everything is available but only thing is there if people are working okay in the bat lab they are doing the characterization or they are working with uh proteins modeling they are working with uh this uh rna sequencing and other things and they will put the data at the public database so that it will be available to the public uh they can use anywhere any anywhere anytime anything it is freely available that is the main main intention of this public uh databases and nothing uh, uh special so Till now, it's okay. Anything doubt? Anything you want to ask me? Yes. Yes, I am audible. Hello. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audible, you are. So, anything you want to ask me? Any doubt? Anything anybody wants to ask me before going to? A main part of this uh, application in aquaculture what where the bioinformatics can be used in the aquaculture or fisheries anything you want to ask me yes anybody has any doubt yes hello yes shall i continue Yes, shall I continue? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Continue, continue, sir. Any doubt is there? Shall I continue? No, no, no. You continue, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So, what we talk about the bioinformatics tools or databases, but aim is only what these methods or these tools or these things, whether people are doing the whole genome, people are working on the proteins, people are working on the R. Uh, this RNAs only intention is the what is the applications but today I think this uh, training program is for the fisheries fisheries people also we, we will find out what are the applications why are these bioinformatics tools or why are the data but we are analyzing uh, analyzing what is application in aquaculture or in fisheries or same thing maybe for the plants or the veterinary science or me medical science so these these are the applications where you can use this bioinformatics where you can use the bioinformatics in aquaculture whether you want to you want to hold genome sequence and uh, analysis of the fishes okay you want to find out the molecular markers okay you want to uh compare it to genome analysis you want to see uh, what's the difference between the genome of zebra fish and the cutla or zebra fish and a rambo trout or zebra fish on uh, this what is the similarity what is the similarity you can do yeah you want to do the rna sequence analysis okay you want to see how uh, what's all the expression what are the tones what are the genes are expressing from the dna of the particular gene or in the particular tissue okay that you can do okay you want to develop this uh drug drug design yes yes hello hello yes sir audible okay so you want to identify the uh this uh single nucleotide polymorphism in a genome if you have the whole genome you want to find out 
why why the polymorphism is there okay you want to analyze the next generation sequence data which has been taken from the fishes so these are the some applications that we have uh, I, uh, I have bring here uh, in order to explain you in order to show you know why why you can use this bioinformatics why why you can use this bioinformatics tools or softwares to analyze the data so here uh, this is like uh, I have bring the uh, this tool tool for genome annotations. Okay, if you have the genome of the zebra fish and you want to find out where is the growth hormone, okay, in which chromosome it is, okay, how many genes are uh, coding regions are there, okay, how many non coding regions are there, okay, same things for the rambo trout, same things for them. You can use the software, so you can use the tool, you can know exact position, okay, from where this growth hormone started from, where and where it is ending. Nowadays, the tools are available. You can know in which chromosome it is, how many coding regions are there, how many non coding regions are there, the wire is the promoter, wire is the signal peptides, why is this? So, you can use that to do the genome annotations, okay? Like, why is the CDS region, coding region, why is the non coding, why are the uh, this uh, poly allegation sites, why are the five prime side, why are the three prime side? Everything you can know by using this uh, genome annotation tools nowadays. Same thing for the proteins, okay? You want to uh, find, uh, you want to uh, identify the protein, or you want to do the protein structure modeling. You want to identify the protein. Okay, you want to see uh, how many helix are there, how many beta sheets are there, how the three D structures there. Yeah, interaction of that protein with other uh, proteins, how the protein and uh, protein interaction is going on. Everything you can uh, do also in the fishes. Okay, you can see which proteins are responsible for the diseases. Okay, how much is this, how the structures the protein is changing with disease with the normal uh, proteins that you can easily find out nowadays there's no issue so yeah this uh, i was talking about the drug uh, uh, designing or drug development if you see the drug designing what is the protocol how uh, the drugs uh, are been developed whether they have done the same thing for the coronavirus or they are doing for some other diseases uh, or for vaccines so you can see they they have to first and foremost find out which uh, genes or which proteins which proteins or genes or rnas are responsible for that disease or that uh, change so they have to find out the target identification. Then they have the target validations. They have to find out the molecules which they can, they can, they can be antagonistic of that uh, drug-related proteins. Okay, they can be uh, that disease-related proteins. They have to find out. Then they have to optimize it. Then they will start clinical trials. They will start this. Then they will approve for the market. That's what they have also done. Same for the coronavirus. It is a normal process for every drug or vaccine, whatever it, uh, you 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 will say. This. They have to do in vitro analysis in vitro trials they had to in vivo trials okay they had to find out first first and foremost like in the coronavirus also they was eager to know which genes uh, they are going to target or which genes are responsible for the virulence whether it is a spike protein whether it's a membrane protein so they have to find out the target then validate that target then find out the molecules find out the drugs or vaccines which will be the uh, against of that uh, disease causing proteins or uh, whatever then then they start the trials it's the normal process uh, for the drug development uh, which which normally takes uh, this near about 10 to 15 years so but up to this uh, legal uh, candidate optimizations okay you can do everything in the in silico okay you can use the bioinformatics tools nowadays easily to find out uh, uh, these things and you will reduce the time you can reduce this everything so from this onwards you will go for uh, this preclinical uh, clinical trial and drug uh, this uh, the approval so the clinical and uh, preclinical trial you have to go for the wet lab experiments you have to check that efficacy and you have to check that data which you have, which has been generated by bioinformatics software or by uh, by, uh, by bioinformatics or computational biology techniques so this is the normal procedure to find out uh, the drugs uh, for any particular disease or this one another uh, applications that you can use in the fisheries also uh, this bioinformatics or computer genomics okay that i have already told computer genomics so you want to know if the zebra fish model organism whole genome is available so uh, somebody wants to uh, like i told uh, recently they have found out the grain let's they have done the whole genome so they want to uh, use zebra fish as a reference genome to where is the growth hormone in zebra fish while it is in the uh, in the uh, gray millets yeah why is there uh, this uh, trypsin gene present in which chromosomes while it is in, in in the gray millet they can make the comparison easily they can find out they can find out why it is insane it's the same in uh, zebra fish or it is different in the uh, gray millet or in the rainbow trout they can easily compare uh, together and they can find out why why difference are there why why similarities are there you can easily do with respect to fish with respect to cow with respect to dog with respect to chicken you can compare the genome you can compare uh, you can do the comparative analysis 
to find out what, which one is the similarity or which one is the uh, dissimilar. So another thing is the evolutionary relationship, phylogenetic uh, and distance you can find out. So uh, suppose how we will say, you know, uh, this uh, uh, zebra fish uh, is a splenity family, okay. Scarps are splenity family, the molecular evolution, the molecular level, they are very close to each other as compared to if we compare with some cat fishes or with some shrimps or with some uh, higher vertebrates like a frog or uh, some amphibians so it will be clearly uh, find out you know, what is the genetic distance how much they are far with each other what is the evolution relationship so uh, everything easily we can find by using this nowadays the tools there are different tools that are for the molecular uh, analysis well known is the mega mega software is there by you can analyze which one is close uh, related to your target species which one is the distant okay how much genetic distance is there so you can easily do uh, nowadays by using this uh, freely available softwares are also there. Like I have given one example is uh, Mega. So there's another uh, applications that you can use for the aquaculture or fisheries or some other biological science nowadays. The next generation you can send data analysis. So there are so many uh, softwares available when you are doing the whole genome you know, sequence so and you want to know uh, gene analysis. You want to know why is the non-coding regions? Why are the coding regions? You want to analyze everything. So there are so many softwares nowadays available. Some are paid. Some are free. You can analyze the data, you can uh, compare the data, you can find out uh, so many things um, from that big data by using this, uh, bioinformatics uh, very fast and very uh, smoothly. There is no issue in that. So lastly, I want to uh, talk about uh, this education platform as I told my earlier. So I will, I will say to you nowadays, uh, in India also there are the universities, there are the courses which uh, offer you a master's degree in the bioinformatics. Okay master's uh, PhD in the bioinformatics or computational biology. So there are so many uh, platforms or so many positions also in or in the uh, competition uh, in uh, private companies or uh, private ship. There are so many uh, softwares uh, people will develop the software which will help us analyze. Uh, suppose uh, if uh, some software uh, nowadays in the NGS, they are taking five hours or six hours to analyze whole genome. Somebody is interested to develop the software which will take three hours or four hours or so can uh, do that yeah somebody is interesting uh in the uh, research uh, work okay uh, there are the questions nowadays are coming in the uh, research institutes where they need the bioinformatic people they need uh, this competition biology people or somebody uh, want to uh, database design okay web designing okay he, he is interested in the web designing so there are a the lot of applications where somebody want to interest in the medical clinical research clinical data analysis data analysis and to find out that this um, in private uh, companies or in industries also lot of applications are uh, available for the bioinformatics those who have done masters at phd in the bioinformatics or computational biology the, the field is open they can go for uh, government sector also they can go for the private sector also so uh, the, the scope is tremendous it is it's nowadays it's at the top level like you maybe have seen this uh, data science uh, in uh, data science they, uh, there is also the need of this bioinformatics where you can analyze the huge big data that nowadays are producing so before ending, I, I want to give something overview about also the database of fishes in India as the training is related with the fisheries. So India has also developed some databases for the fishes also. So well-known database uh, that uh, NBFGR, National Bureau of Genetics is maintaining that uh, fish barcode, okay. And that's DNA barcoding, you maybe have allowed about the DNA barcoding that is for molecular taxonomy, okay. They are maintaining uh, the databases, uh, those fishes, they have found out the, uh, this uh, cytochrome C oxidase, okay, molecular uh, barcoding data or molecular taxonomy data they maintain their molecular barcode so that tomorrow if some ambiguity is there or tomorrow somebody want to are interested to know what is the uh, barcode of that particular fish so he can easily go to the database and find out whether it is a present whether it has been done already or not he can easily retrieve or he can, he can, he can easily find out uh, that so there is another database roho roho database has developed with respect to roho whether it's a protein database or rna database or whole genome database they are cifa uh, cifa has done the great work on the roho okay so they uh, have developed the data molecular data or protein data it is available in that uh, database it is specific with the respect to the roho uh, there's a micro satellite uh, database uh, that nwebgr again is maintaining some markers uh, single uh, simple sequence repeats or short tandem repeat data um, basically they are maintaining uh, particular markers uh, for particular fishes or particular family they are uh, maintaining the data so that anybody can use that uh, marker or anybody can use that um, uh, micro satellites markers to identify or to uh, identify that uh, data or to identify that fish 
so micro it's micro servers again with uh, this NBFDR people. So uh, at the final, I will I, I will leave you with one message that uh, John Enrich has been given. If you want to compete in bioinformatics, first you need to compete uh, for real smart people. You need really smart people to understand the manipulate and nanomolecules. It's absolutely right. Um, most of the softwares that uh, heavy softwares nowadays available for analyzing. Uh, whole genome data or NGS data or transcription data, you need this uh, Python language holding, or you need R language holding, or you need command based language. It's not easy to do that. If you need small people, you need intelligent people, you need hard work people so that they can learn this language, they can analyze the data. It is not so easy as you as you think, uh, as you, uh, you maybe have analyzed. But nothing is impossible, nothing is uh, easy. Uh, but you, you can imagine, so um, as I told you, humans have this uh, NGS data of 3.2 million base pair. It's not easy to handle that data, how much huge big data are there. So to analyze, to interpret that data, to, uh, to, to, do, uh, to do a lot of analysis from that, it's not so easy. It's a huge to handle that uh, big data. You need really uh, great people or really sincere people to, do, to work in this competition or bioinformatics field. Thank you. Thank you very much once again. I will thanks to organizers for giving me opportunity to present very small uh, topic regarding the bioinformatics and applications if you have any doubt you can ask me regarding uh, this topic thank you thank you very much yes yes Participants, if you have any questions, please type on in chat. Uh, you can ask so directly. Yes, anybody has any questions, you can ask me. Yes.